Hi there, welcome to the video module concerning the new process for our initial assessment area. Um, it's, um, I'm glad you're watching the video because this is going to run you through the changes that we're going to make, the ideas that um, underlie them and um, what's expected of everybody within this new um, theoretical area. Well, I say theoretical, it's not that theoretical, it um, is what we're proposing to start with at least. So we, um, this will be a module that's coming um, and will arrive outside of reception at the front door area. The idea is that patients will be coming in through this entrance here. They will no longer be expected to come back in. Um, it'll be a one-way system in through the top of the module um, and they'll be directed into either a clinical waiting space, when I say clinical cubicle is what I mean, um, or directed straight into triage one and if it's particularly busy there'll be a triage two um, and then the patients will be triaged and then they'll be expected to come into the department. Um, the booking in process is still under review um, and will be updated as soon as we have decided on exactly how we're going to do it in the initial stages at least it may well be a paper-based exercise with recording times which is not ideal but um, it's very difficult having this in front of reception and creating a one-way system at the same time so um, either booking in at reception after the triage or depending on what we do um, but once they have been triaged the idea of triage is that it's rapid and there'll be another module um, that's coming out that will talk about delegation and rapid triage and it has to be quicker than what we're used to within these areas to ensure that this area does not fall behind and become clogged up with patients otherwise we won't be allowed to let people into the emergency department we should we should be able to avoid that almost all of the time patients will then come in and then we can triage to several areas one area will be potentially home alternative services, MIU, GP, and so on. Um, another one maybe that particularly, well, really is an escalation policy um, is what we're proposing in the earlier stages where um, we have a planned return aspect and say, well, actually, at the moment, the department's overcrowded. Your presentation is one that could potentially be seen elsewhere. Um, please try and get an appointment. Here's the details. If you can't, please call us on a number later. And if we're less busy, then we'll say that it's OK to come back. But at the moment, um, your presentation is one that we can't accommodate within our department safely. Um, and so that will be um, in development, um, a kind of planned return pathway. Um, but at the same time, um, we may also triage people who, for example, um, are relatively well, have made their own way up, but um, have a condition where we think it may be COVID for ex um, pre predominantly, um, but it also might imply something like influenza or something at a different time of year. Um, however, we've decided that they're well enough, but COVID is majors is full, so we'd expect to triage those patients, make sure they're on the system, they go out and wait in the car that they arrived in whilst we find some space on majors. So there's a, a few streams out of the department rather than in the department, but in general, um, as we'd expect, most people will probably end up coming into the department. Um, and at that point, at triage, we would, have tri we would be triaging them directly to the area in which we think is relevant. Um, so the areas that we know about already, we've mentioned COVID majors, um, those patients who we think should go directly to um, clean majors should do so. Theoretically, they can and probably should if capacity allows go through the fab day. Um, otherwise, um, they will just go into clean majors. Um, the others will be those that are going to minors, but that might be by an x-ray, which the route currently should be reopened to go to x-ray. Um, and once they've been to x-ray, they then go around to minors. We'll also identify those with the see and treat um, type presentation so that they can be highlighted. And if crowding becomes a, a risk, then we can address it by seeing what we believe is quite quick um, patients to be discharged from the department. Um, and then we have this kind of whole new concept, really, that we've kind of touched on over recent weeks, but this will become our fit to sit area. This will no longer be this closed loop triage system. Triage occurs before this area, which leads up this, <clears throat> the old triage room, which we are going to turn into what we call the procedure room. So patients will um, come in and they will be deemed to have something like chest pain or abdominal pain, but are relatively well. So they will come into this area, be triaged into the fit to sit, and the procedure room will 
be there to help do things like blood tests and um, ECGs, but it's also to be noted that patients ideally should come out of the fit to sit area into the fab bay. But the fab bay function is also going to continue where they're um, fabbing patients on their way into clean majors. So it is quite possible that the fab bay um, will be um, taken up at that point. And under those circumstances, <clears throat> we'd expect those, those tests and things to be done as soon as possible within the procedure room. Um, and that's pretty much the whole, the, the idea. This will become really an initial assessment area where we assess, put patients into the right part of the department, but at the same time, direct into this new area, this fit to sit, where there'll be an army of you trying to get early um, tests um, done and early review of patients. When I say an army, of course, that's not quite true. Um, we have the fab team already, which consists of a, um, a nurse and a HCA. Um, we're going to have a HCA overlooking this area here. Um, and we're also currently at least going to have a HCA here, what we call a kind of navigator type role, who will be helping assist patients into the right areas here and maybe direct them on this side here. Um, we're also um, going to have triage nurse and triage one should be present in triage all the time. Triage two nurse will be an escalation nurse who will who we propose will assist with the fit to sit and the procedure room, um, but her, the predominant role is to ensure that this does not become clogged up and when necessary, she drops into T2, he or she drops into T2 to be able to um, um, assist with the front door triaging process. Um, but this role will be kind of a floating role into the areas depending on what's going on. The, the rest of the structure stays the same except triage two as we currently know it and will become the clinical room and we'll have a preference for patients to come into this area from the fit to sit into this clinical room. We only have one clinical room that could pose problems. Occasionally we may deem it appropriate to use the procedure room and if we have to, we will use um, clean majors. But the idea is that without having to pull these patients into clean majors, it makes capacity um, on majors a little bit better um, and will reduce the amount of clogging up that we have within our in our major system. Um, <clears throat> it's probably wise to see this whole area in some ways separate from the other areas. So we, we see COVID area as its own area, clean majors as its own area, minors as its own area, and this initial assessment area should be its own area. So everybody within this area would be expected to work together um, in order to achieve good initial assessment times, early recognition, recognition of unwell patients, early response to surgeries and triage, um, ensure that patients get to the right location as early as possible. Um, and, um, and basically what we do in this area will dictate potentially um, how effective the department is, but um, also exactly how busy and how much demand goes into those other key areas of the emergency department. Um, things may change, but this is the principle behind this whole initial assessment idea, okay? Um, and um, where does a clinician come in? Well, hopefully he comes in here and they come into here and they're just around as, a, as, as you'd expect them to be. Um, and um, over the few weeks, there may be some tweaks to this whole idea, but this is the principle of what we're trying to achieve. There'll be some modules coming out based on triage and specifically on how to improve the process of our triage in the sense that we're a little bit slicker, we're a little bit quicker, but also one of the key aspects of triage, of delegation of work into um, this area is most likely so that this area does not become clogged up, okay? Hope you've not been completely bored to death. Please come and speak to me if you would like um, further things clarified. Um, there will be a standard operating procedure that comes out probably about a 15, 20 page document, so you may not wish to read all of it. But one of the key areas will highlight a little bit of the background um, and it will also have some action cards in there for each specific job role as we currently have designed it and currently understand it. But please 
um, be aware this is a new process so we'll be subject to change as we move forward um, to try and improve it um, and any feedback any feedback on things that you think work and don't work would be extremely useful thank you